All right, guys. Uh, it's uh, Devious Hostel here again, doing a, another guide. Uh, today's guide, however, is going to be for Planet Side Two. Uh, I recently came back to playing Planet Side Two when uh, Neverwinter content kind of got a little bit stagnant. Not saying uh, I'm not going to continue to play that game. However, uh, it needs some new content before I start hitting it really hard again. And uh, joined our Devious community over on Planet Side again. And I'm doing a quick medic guide for you. So today for the medic guide, um, I'm going to go through the certifications, uh, the weapons that I like to use, kind of go over my play style, um, talk about the frag grenade versus res grenade versus healing grenades, and then uh, kind of how to level and what to level in what order. All right, so um, to start off with, uh, medic. All right, your biggest two passes are... Uh, Certifications that you're going to want to be getting are obviously medic tool and ability slot. Alright, um, passive system, it's kind of meh. I have one point in it just because I had the extra certs. Um, anyway, so you don't have to worry about utility slot unless you're going for super survival mode, which I've done a couple of times if I'm soloing and there's not a whole lot of people and I'm going against where I'm looking at, you know... 5v2 situations, 5v1 situations where, say I'm solo defending a biolab versus squad, it allows me to have enough healing consistently to go from point to point to keep them off until uh, more people arrive to help me out. So that being said, you can put that into this. I have it because I play other classes. Um, passive systems, like I said, triage is meh. It's, I mean, it's... They need to fix that. Alright, then you have the medic tool. Your medic tool is quite possibly the most important tool that you have maxed first. However, when you start hitting up to rank 4 and rank 5, that's when you're going to start bouncing uh, back and forth between nano regen. It, it's a lot easier. It's more uh, cert effective. I think it's only like one point yeah, to go up to rank 2 in both of these. So literally one kill pretty much and you're you're in your rank threes and rank fours so my advice is to go get up to rank three in both of them and then start alternating saving your certs in order to spin them up so that way you can max them out um, at the same time however you need to start looking at either flak armor or nano weave I have um, advanced shield capacitor because I'm working on literally maxing out everything for the class. I'm going to end up buying all the weapons with every site and everything like that. So I have one class that's fully maxed out. Um, however, uh, the biggest two armors that I would say are either flak or nano weave. Um, grenade bandolier can be good. Um, I used it in beta back when uh, we used to do a lot of biolab defense cert farm kind of situations because you can use, you know, it gives you what, three, he uh, yeah, three healing grenades. But there's also a problem with that. Those three healing grenades become very, very, very resource intensive. So, um, also works for revive grenades, but honestly, if you're having to have that many revive grenades on you, it's probably not a good day for your squad. Um, and then we're going to go into grenade slot. Alright, I have both nanite healing and nanite revive. Nanite healing is actually really good. Um, a lot of people, I think, find it underrated and choose the revive grenade. But depending on your team composition, your squad composition and platoon composition, and what type of objectives you're taking, whether it be towers or bio labs. Um, tech plants, stuff like that. Healing grenades actually provide a good point for a coordinated squad to push into into a healing area. So basically, um, think of a normal MMO where you have AOE pool heals. Uh, it's kind of the same idea. You throw out that heal out in front of your squad as they push in with the max charge. And then as soon as you get behind that element, you already have a huge pool area and combine that with your... Uh, ability slot, you have a lot of healing going out to those around you. So it actually keeps people up. Like you can, if the ticks are alternating, you can actually keep someone up that's getting focus fired um, by a heavy or something like that. So you can keep people alive 
to let them do the pushes. And then that's the only reason why I would say Grenade Bandolier is an acceptable and viable option, is so you can have multiple yeah, healing grenades to do multiple large pushes like that. But honestly, you should be running about two medics per squad. So, you know, like I said, that's that comes up to individual play style. Um, and then you have your utility slot. I only have one in the C4 just because it's actually kind of useful, especially if you end up being kind of the last guy alive and you're pulling back and all that's left is that one max. You can just drop it down, kill that max, and go on and res your squad. All right. Now we're going to talk about weapons. All right. My normal loadout for uh, most of the time, obviously I'm in the VR, so it's a little bit different. Um, my normal loadout is underboss as my uh, secondary weapon, obviously med tool. All right, suit. I either rock nano weave or flak. Um, flak is generally something I will run if I'm in a tech plant bio lab or a uh, air tower um, because there's so much um, grenades and stuff being thrown around. Um, it's really effective. I like nano weave, however, if I'm in open field combat. Um, now, weapons. Weapons are huge. The, actually, we have a great source of weapons for the uh, medic. I think the medic has some of the better weapons uh, throughout the uh, NC, that they have such a diverse range of all, almost all good weapons that are specifically for their class. Their base Gauss rifle is actually really good. Um, I don't have it... Um, I don't really use it that much anymore because I have shooter preference uh, items now. Um, I'm a huge fan of the GR22. Uh, I like the Gauss Rifle S, but only for the smoke launcher. Um, I use that on pushes combined with my uh, uh, healing grenades. So that way you have a healing grenade going out, plus you have smoke. So it kind of gives you some concealment. Now, this obviously requires a little bit of team coordination because you don't want to do it if you don't have the team coordination to have uh, IR, IR or uh, night vision sights um, because it can kind of mess that up. Um, so if you're pushing into a room and everybody's kind of using those sights and everybody kind of knows how to fight in that, then it's a great, great option for pushes. Um, the next one that I like quite a bit is the Reaper DMR. Um, the time to kill on this thing is phenomenal. I mean, it's it's a freaking sniper rifle. It's it's effective. It's decent at close range, but I wouldn't suggest it. Um, but in your long range engagements, um, I'll either in my long range engagements, I either have the Gauss Rifle S or the Reaper DMR. Uh, short range engagements, I like the uh, GR22. The GR22 has an extreme rate of fire. Uh, let me put my stuff on here that I normally run. Alright, so you'll notice something though with the GR-22, it's it's a shotgun rifle. This thing, I mean, it, it just goes to town. Um, I like the suppressor on it because it allows me as a medic that if I get separated, I can still kill people but not get my position away in order to get back to my element. Because as a medic, that's what you want to be doing. You always want to be with your element. Anyway, so that's the GR-22. Um, I actually like the Blitz. Um, I'm a personal fan of the iron sights with the blitz. Um, I'll either run the suppressor or the compensator. It just depends on kind of where I'm fighting. Obviously, advanced laser sight and soft point ammo. Um, now, there was a bug. I'm not sure if it was fixed because I haven't tested it again recently, but the soft point ammo was doing 25 points less damage than when it had uh, no, no ammo slot. So, uh, something I'm going to have to test. Uh, GR20, or, I'm sorry, the blitz is decent for close range. It's kind of nice because it allows you to have a little bit of mid-range fight as well as close range. Um, the other thing I like to use is as a shotgun, I like the piston of the sweeper. I, I don't mess with the claw anymore on the medic. I find um, the sweeper with slugs to be a great option. So, um... You know, the sweeper with slugs has great, great, great long range capabilities. I mean, I'm doing headshots from, I mean, obviously no moving target, but I'm doing headshots from a decent 
you know, range. So it's a it's a good viable option. I used to use it all the time. Um, you just gotta get used to aiming it. It takes three shots to kill people at range, two shots close, so it, it's not bad. Um, but I've been running the piston mostly um, during my short range engagements if it's not the GR22 because let's face it, the piston's OP. And don't put on slugs. It's a uh, waste of serp points. Um, it it kind of messes with your messes with your accuracy, messes with your close range kills. So I mean, it's just if you play in C and you use the piston, you know what I'm talking about. It's a great weapon. Um, from there, uh, let's see here. Weapon wise, um, Carnage BR. I know a lot of people talk about it. The Carnage BR is actually not that great of a weapon. It has almost the same fire rate as the GR-22. It's a little bit slower. However, its time to kill is actually a little bit longer. It does less damage per shot. So the DPS overall on the GR-22 is far better than the Carnage BR. And then you have the Ghost Rifle Burst, but I mean, it's... You can do the underbill shotgun, but that's useless. Um, you know, you can go advanced laser, get whatever sight you'd like. Um, you know, it, it's not very. I don't. I don't find it to be user friendly, honestly. I mean, it's time to kill is just ridiculous. So, um, because it's single shot or burst, and that's it. it it's. It needs an update, an upgrade, something like that. Um, it probably actually needs a um, damage boost. Because, um, I mean, it does the same damage that the Gauss Rifle S and the, the base Gauss Rifle do, but just that burst, I think, is such a, um, a nerf to the weapon itself. Um, let's see here. What do we got going on now? All right. Grenades. All right. I already talked about... The res and revive grenades are both great. Um, they're both very situational. I will run frag grenades solo unless I'm in a bio lab or uh, some other defensive point, and then I'll run healing or nano uh, or the uh, revive grenades. But from there, it's pretty much frag grenades. Frag grenades are really good, it gives you guys kills. Just make sure you use it when your team. Isn't in front of you. I, I can't stress that enough. It's a problem I see with all newer players. It's a problem I see even with some um, veteran players. Just using grenades at bad times. I do it sometimes, but I try to time them right. Um, and I also remember that if you're going to die, throw it earlier before you know you're going to die because it's not going to go off. It's not going to get out of your inventory and then you're not going to get anything out of it. So if you're going to get to that point where you're going to die, just drop it. <laughs> um, let's see, I already talked about using C4. Um, and, I mean, certifications. Biggest thing I can't stress enough. Get to rank 3 in both your tool and ability, then start alternating. About the time that you hit about 4 or 5 in your tool and ability, go nuts. Get all the way to... Uh, Flak 4 armor and Nano Weave 4 armor, um, and then push it into 5. That's the last thing I'm probably going to do. Your grenade slots should come after you do your uh, suit slot. Um, and then once you have your grenades, you can then move into utility, grab C4, and then pick your weapon. Find your weapons. Um, you know, that. It's about finding a set of weapons that you can use in almost all situations and figuring out what works best for you. I know that a suppressor on this works best for me. You might find that you don't need any barrel attachment. You know, nothing is mandatory in this game. Everything's a little bit custom. Everything is customizable to every player. It's all about personal preference. Um, I'm prior military, so we we have a saying. It's called shooter preference, and that's what it is. It's shooter preference. So figure out the guns that you like the most, figure out how their recoil works, like with this I know that if I just shoot it right here, I'm going to go up and right. But the recoil isn't that bad with the advanced laser sight, so you just kind of got to pull down and left a little bit, and you're going to hit all those rounds on target. And so come in, mess around in the VR, and get used to using the guns that you like. Um, from, from there, you know... 
Medic is a soloable class, just like all classes are here, but learn to play in a coordinated team. Find a good outfit, find that outfit that fits well with your playstyle, the community that fits well with you. I like DVS, I love DVS, been with them for um, almost two years now. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, a little over two years now. Um, and it's about finding that niche within your element. So if you can find some guys to run with consistently, that's your best bet. Find those guys, figure out how their playstyle is, figure out their tactics, and then adjust your playstyle from there. Always try to be in the back. If you're running two medics, the best way to do it as you're pushing through objectives is you have one medic that kind of sits back. And that's why using the rifles like the GR-22 are good because you have the close range engagement, you can get that mid range engagement, and then you're still part of an effective team even though you're kind of sitting back, just kind of healing the people that kind of pull back out of the front lines. But then you want that one medic that's really good at being up in that front line. You want to be able to be right up in the nitty gritty with all your other infantry guys, especially when you have engineers that are sitting on your max his asses and trying to keep keep him alive that's where it becomes a really big key is learning how to stay in the front of the fight without dying so find that cover use cover concealment use what we call defilade which is uh, dead space it's where someone is someone's down there at the end of this tunnel and there's a little rock right here all right so that's cover all right but then you have a little dip right here that's defilade. So that defilade allows you the ability to not necessarily be where everybody else is fighting. However, you can be right here and rezzing everybody, healing everybody. That's what you should be doing. You should be having your freaking medical applicator out whenever you're not running from uh, cover to cover. So whenever you're at a stationary location, you need to be with your medical applicator out, healing the people that are around you, using your ability slot. Your ability slot, you should always be popping. You know, when it's at six, you can just sit there and pop that thing all day long it's I mean it's a great tool don't just use it to heal yourself that's why you can if you'd like instead of running c4 you can always just run a quick and easy uh, quick and easy wow bad me quick and easy med kit so anyway guys that's my guide for uh, the NC medic and um, I'm sure to an extent it's fairly similar for uh, all of the factions. However, um, NC is where it's at. So, thank you for watching my guide, and uh, please like and.